The green flag waves at the back, so he will depart the front of the grid. The red lights are about to come on, and we're about to go racing in the search for a British Telecup champion, possibly. And away we go. It is a great start from Fetter C by the number 22 there. Absolutely superb. He will definitely get the whole shot down into turn one there. He's followed by number two. That's Jack Nixon. Great start from him from the front row of the grid. Where was number three? Uh, Resurgent, uh, number 15, sorry. Well, he's just behind them there. Cameron Horseman, it looks like the number 23. He's in the front group there. But Scott Ogden, your championship leader, number four, he is in third. Who is switching left now and they'll be switching right and left again on the run down to the hangar straight. Be plenty of chopping and changing there, all in the slipstream but all safely through these first couple of corners. Yeah, I was going to say, you can see on the graphics there, it's Nixon ahead now. I thought it was, but it's a bit difficult to tell when it's a two versus a 22. Uh, but Nixon then has taken the lead from Seabright, so Seabright not immediately able to make some air after that great start from pole position. But like you said, Matt Ogden right up in there in the mix, and Horseman as well had a pretty solid start, as he often has done when he started just that little bit further back off the front row. No truly mad overtaking uh, manoeuvres down into Stowe but Fenter Seabright's taken back the lead there and that does look like it's Irwin in third place he's taken that off Scott Ogden it looks like no Cameron Horseman has even taken it off Scott Ogden as well all the way up from eighth then Horseman up to fourth now he needs to cling on to that front group try and get towards the front and take as many points off Ogden as possible but that was I'm surprised how cleanly we've managed to get through this first lap round I must admit a bit of a peek up the inside there from Nixon on Seabright though now this is a bit of a danger zone they've not spent a lot of time on the left hand side of the tyre there can be a bit of a problem area was farm curve but all safely through there look at this oh that was horseman looking up the inside of nixon again he's already dispatched Irwin. this is great stuff from horseman the wily old 17 year old i think he might be 18 years old now someone had their birthday very recently uh, over the last couple of days in fact but uh, horseman they're def definitely the elder statesman of the championship runners of course ogden only 15 years old He's been pushed back to sixth now, has Ogden. We're on the run down towards Brooklyn's. Nick, Nixon's got the lead, or has he? No, it's Horseman. I was going to say, looking at Cameron Horseman through the majority of that lap, looked like he was going to be hitting the front as quickly as possible. Nice and cleanly dispatched as well, especially guys like Irwin. Irwin's been fairly aggressive in this cup all season. And Nixon as well. They've got nothing on the line, so they can fight straight back and really make a fight of it. But Cameron Horseman, absolutely supreme then, and has absolutely nailed the end of that lap and has a pretty uh, nice bit of breathing space just behind him and it's Seabright who's the man now back chasing him. Well, yeah, look at that. Half a second as they come over the line for Horseman already. He has done exactly what he needed to do. That was a very mature first lap. That's about as awesome a first lap as you could ever hope for. Oh, we got someone down in there. Oh, it's Shel Shelton, Zach Shelton. Oh, it just goes from bad to worse for poor old Shelton. He had a rotten run of luck back in Bruno. Wiped out of the final corner in the final lap. Both races, our hearts bled for him. Absolutely Before he nearly got his first podium. Bruno, but right up and OK, which is always the main thing, obviously. But sad to lose Shelton from this race so early on. Hopefully uh, no, uh, no crazy things have gone on too much in that uh, well, take for him to be of the field. Bumped off yet again, but here's a replay Might of what replay. happened. Looks as though it could have been all on his own, but we do have a change in uh, in what looks like uh, the podium battle. Brian Hart, the number nine, was keeping an eye on it. He's up to second now, and it was him who had his birthday just the other day, 17 years old, on the 19th of August, uh, as he chops through. Oh, he gets chopped through there. That was Reese Irwin, the number 15, sorry, uh, going up the inside of Nixon, but Nixon fights straight back. Excellent stuff. Cracking race in there, making full use of the full width of the track there. But Brian Hart on the hunt down for Cameron Horseman now. If we could have a move at that point in every lap, that would be wonderful because it's so great on that camera angle. Just absolutely stunning racing from these guys. Aggressive, but super clean so far. Uh, oh, Scott Ogden there, a little bit wide. Lost a couple of places there, did the points leader. But you can see then Brian Hart looking fairly racy, right on the tail of Cameron Horseman, looking for a way past. Very, very wide entry there from Brian Hart, round into this arrow head before they fire it onto the Wellington straight. He wants to get right into the slipstream of Cameron Horseman and try to overtake him. But look at the real, who's been the real loser over the last couple of laps? Well, that's been Fenton Seabright, the number 22 the pole position man, the man who has managed to escape and break the pack as we have a change for the lead. Brian Hart down into Brooklyn's. He takes the lead from Cameron Horseman. As I was just saying, Fenton Seabright bumped down to seventh place, though, in this group. He's been really mugged all over in the last couple of laps. There he is, just in the centre of your screen. And that is, that is Ogden just behind him as well. So, full drama overload in just the first couple of laps. We're about to cross the line then to complete the second. 
They just come past our commentary position now. You can feel the rumble, Franco. Beneath you our feet, can, can't you? You really can. <laughs> even just these little BTC bikes. Obviously, there's quite a few of them out there. But even so, the rumble is fairly significant up here in our commentary box. But it's getting a little bit messy now in this second group. You can see Horseman and Hart have just made a nice little gap for themselves, and nothing too crazy being exchanged between them. But these guys just behind. It's Ogden now at the head of that squabble, according to our graphics. But no, it's already Seabart who's taken Blimey. him back. They seem to be costing each other. A a fair bit of time in that fight for third at the moment. Maybe costing each other time, but blimey, they're really pulling through the pack and uh, and making solid recovery. Sped to see by just a few corners ago. He's down in seventh. He's now back up to third place and on the hunt down for these two up ahead. Uh, I'm sure we saw uh, going through... Uh, uh, where is it? Woodcut Corner, just outside of commentary position. A couple of taps on the back of the seat units. Please follow me. Don't overtake me. You know exactly what happens then, don't you? No one listens. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> well, here's the live championship standings as it stands, but this is not going to last for long whatsoever. Horseman closing down to minus seven points from Ogden if he maintains second in this race. However, I'm pretty sure he's going to be making a move for uh, for first fairly soon. But look at that, Fenton Seabright really closing down on him. They made big inroads on them down the hangar straight that time. Yeah, very much. And Horseman seemed to just lose out a little bit there, but no, he's nailed the exit there and right back on the back of Hart. But uh, oh, Riso in there that uh, aggression I talked about earlier but always well controlled or fairly well controlled and spectacular is the Irishman but again these guys it's all just a little bit fraught isn't it in this battle behind and Ogden again he looked like he got to the front of that group you expected maybe him and Seabright to start breaking away and catching the leaders but in actual fact again he's been shuffled back a bit Seabright's having a bit of a tougher time to hold on to that third and yeah he's lost it again to Reese Irwin who's kept that position it's not going to plan, I imagine, for the numbers 22 and 4 at the moment. Not at all, but Horseman looks like it's all nearly going to plan for him. He had a peek at the inside of Brian Hart there, but just ran a little bit wide mid-apex there. Could he be lining up for Luffield? No, he doesn't this time around. He needs to just follow him. But yes, there is Jack Nixon. Uh, he's really making Scott Ogden's life a living hell at the moment, isn't he? He does not want him to let him get away or get through. He wants to be the one to hunt down the riders ahead of him. That is Seabright and Irwin ahead of him. They are in the podium positions. When you're out of the championship, fight you just want to fight for the highest position you possibly can you really do i'd say living hell was maybe a little bit extreme <laughs> as I, you see have you seen the moves he's pulled on him <laughs> at the uh, front of the race then he is back in the lead and ogden still a little bit lost in that squabble but it looks like c white's looking fairly uh, i was going to say fairly oh, racy again moves oh, up the inside of him magnetton beckett c bright fastest lap that time around a 219 well as we if we rewind a year the fastest race lap we had was from rory skinner a 220 on the saturday although the conditions were fairly mixed then weren't they uh, with the rain and whatnot different surface as well so running a pretty hot pace we are today now this will be interesting what can they do down the hangar straight here it's a long hard drag especially on these low capacity machines how big a hole in the air has the likes of Irwin and Seabright punched for Jack Nixon and Scott Ogden to catch them up they have punched a fairly substantial one they do make some inroads there get away from the screen bug uh, as we can <laughs> as we're looking at the run down towards Vale but Cameron Horseman looking at the inside again. Brian Hart, is he going to make the move? Yes, he does. Wow, that was very cool, Karma Collector. Textbook stuff. Absolutely. I think Horseman is fairly eager to definitely be the man in the lead in this race. He's uh, not really let Brian Hart have even more than a couple of corners at the front for quite a while now. Uh, but Seabright and Irwin certainly are catching them. Ogden again. Seemed like they've made quite a few inroads like we saw then, but that gap's just gone out a little bit. So it will be interesting to keep an eye on him. But of course, Ogden, he is the man with the advantage. So he can't afford to just you know, avoid those risks a little bit more than Horseman, who doesn't have to win mathematically, but he certainly has to be right at the sharp end and fighting for those podium positions and preferably a few above Ogden. Quite right, Fran. I think there's the only one thing on his mind, though, is he just thinks, I need to win. I really need to, even though he doesn't quite have to. I imagine to. that's the mindset. It's just gone out on the grid like, right, I'm going to win this race. <laughs> I imagine that's probably the mindset of most of these guys, to, to be, be honest, fair, when you're yeah. at this sort of stage <laughs> in your career. As Brian Hart, he's definitely thinking about it. That characteristic pop above the uh, above the air bubble there. We saw that back in Bruno as well. Very exaggerated indeed. As he goes into Loughfield there, excellent riding star for Brian Hart, I must say. Very happy birthday to him for the other day as well. Uh, of course, Apologies the 17-year-old. 
too confused with a fellow competitor. Yeah, well, the man <laughs> just behind him as well. They, are, they were fairly uh, close, and I was looking at the some of the results previously as well. They come across the line, nearly a dead heat there for them to seven thousandths of a second separate them both. But for the fastest lap of the race goes to Scott Ogden, your championship leader at the moment. You're the first 218 we've seen in this lap. He has managed to really find his feet and get going yet again. He's on the hunt down for Reese Irwin. He looks so he's moving up the inside of him. No, he's not this time. Camera angle definitely caught me off guard there as we come into Maggots and Beckett. That camera angle gets me every time. And again, there looks like Nixon's probably got the move done, but no, he's still behind him. So, uh, yeah, Scott Ogden then seems to have been able to get a bit of a cleaner lap that time around and was the fastest man on track. And you can see now it's very much a bit of a freight train at the front with Horseman still in the lead of it. But that initial two person breakaway that those guys had is a thing of the past now. Yeah, it really is. Well, we see this all the time in the British Talent Cup, don't we? The few riders break way at the beginning of the race and then before long they are caught up again as the, the door to our commentary box mysteriously opens uh, as we see of course with Scott Ogden last time out and Bruno the fourth place which he actually got was uh, uh, the first time he's not actually been on the podium so far this season which was quite a big shock to be honest it just goes to show the consistency of the 15 year old and the dominant force that he has been in the British Talent Cup this season Cameron Horseman something of, rather similar to him as well uh, four wins in 2019 for Cameron Horseman, of course, including that one last time out. But look at this. This really is back again. A freight train, just like we saw on lap one, even with seven laps to go. Yeah, it's very much a bit of a classic Moto3 ensemble piece at the front now, isn't it? And a good little squabble is uh, starting to take over now. It was all very calm for those first few laps, really, other than that bit of a mess fighting over third and fourth for a while. But now they seem to have settled into a bit of a better rhythm and the likes of Scott Ogden now stretching his legs and almost a full second quicker he was than Horseman when he set that fastest lap. So we definitely have a good group fight now. Will it remain that way? We do have seven laps to go still, which is quite a fair way at Silverstone. Yeah, that is the big question. Of course, the riders all in the first part of your picture of the top nine riders all the way down to Jack Hart. Scott Swan, who I must say, I expected him to be up there fighting for the podiums, to be honest, with his uh, BSB experience. He wasn't present in Bruneau due to that uh, racing he had to do down at Thruxton. Uh, so these are the top nine riders in your picture. And I think any one of these at the moment could be challenged for the podium and making that man's life there. Scott Ogden, very, very difficult indeed. He has been pushed back just a little bit again by Fenton Seabright. What were the times looking like on that lap? It has, you're right, Fran, they have it's been messing each other around a little bit. Lots of 220s, 219s in that gap. Brian Hart looking up the inside of Horseman again. No, he's not. He's backed out of it this time around. We have seen from Ogden before, though, like Bruno was a fairly good example as well. When he needs to pull that pace out of his pocket, he can just make it appear. Um, is very pretty much well controlled most of the time very much thinking on the bike and seems to know always when is the moment to push when is the moment to stay a little bit calmer and just manages to uh, time it well cut through the traffic that he needs to to get to where he wants to be and then unleashes that pace to catch that front group or whoever he's trailing so I think that lap was uh, more Ogden saying like well okay I need to catch them up now let's start messing around and now we're back in battle formation in classic Moto3 style they all seem to have just backed off a little bit and there's a bit more squabbling and getting in each other's way again yeah, absolutely. And in this group, I'm just going to give you a bit of a shout out, actually. Harvey Claridge has moved up to seventh place uh, from 11th on the grid. This is arguably one of the best performances we've seen on, from him for quite a while. Just one point is Snetterton, who, of course, I mentioned earlier, crashed out back in uh, Bruneau race one. But uh, and it was great the way down back in race two as well. So to see him up there in this leading groups, pretty interesting indeed. He's not really quite used to that just yet. So, uh, just yet. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff from Claridge. Like you said, a little bit out of position compared to some of his recent performances. But Ooh, we say that very wide there. in an impressive way. I hope we've not commentator cursed. Oh, we'll see disaster, who that was. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, shout out definitely for Harvey Claridge being in this fight, which is, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a little bit corner by corner, a little bit of a gap appears, and then it'll disappear again. Obviously, different riders of different strengths at different parts of this track. But it's still Horseman then holding firm in the lead. But it's... Uh, Brian Hart and now Reese Irwin who are on his tail. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure Horseman is quite aware of the chaos that's going on behind him. Solid move there from Reese Irwin. That was brutal on Brian Hart down into Luffield. There he really shoved him out of the way. Said I am coming through, and that he did. Through Wooker they come. There.
then the rumble under our feet continues once again and that just gives Horseman a little bit of space come the finish line but that will all go away again I suspect at the hangar straight but look at this Ogden we're keeping a close eye on the gap between Horseman and Ogden in this race and it is ever closing he was uh, two tenths quicker than Horseman that time around which is of course what you would expect he's back up into fourth position now he's dispatched Seabright just behind him in fifth place no overtaking moves down to Maggots and Beckett's this time around though yeah, nothing so crazy that time around. Everyone's just taking a little bit of a breather. We are going to get a replay. I think it's whoever ran wide in the background, is it not? Maybe no. Maybe no. Nope, it's just a, a lovely shot of Scott Ogden. It is, it is a lovely shot of Scott leader. Ogden. And uh, you can just see how smooth, even on these small capacity machines, you can see how smooth the asphalt is here now at Silverstone. Those are the sort of bikes we normally see every single little ripple uh, in the in the asphalt. But this time around, no, it's like a billiard table, uh, which uh, we're trying to teach an Italian what a billiard table is, is rather difficult. Just stick at to pool be table. Fair, I'm not really au fait with the uh, billiards versus pool versus snooker Well, yeah, I've never played billiards before. So. I've never played pool, but you know. But it's a felt table and it's green. Yep. <laughs> and flat. That was the key point, really. Exactly. So at exactly. the front, then, uh, Horseman has taken back the lead from Brian Hart, who had briefly then got ahead of the number 23 again. We've got Reese Irwin holding off Scott Ogden. But as you can see at the moment, if it finished like that, it would be incredibly close going into tomorrow. And if remember, if the gap is four points going into the race tomorrow, that means it's who wins the race wins the cup if it's between those two guys. So, you know, in some ways it's uh, the ultimate for uh, horsemen to have it that close. In other ways, it's probably an ultimate nightmare for both of them having <laughs> that much pressure on just one duel. The real problem for Ogden, what he's got there is the man behind in the number 22 of Fenton Seabright. He's also got a couple of problems ahead of him as well in the form of Free Serwin and Jack Hart. Jack Hart's becoming a problem for horsemen as well, though, as they come down into uh, Brian Harker is a problem for him as they come down into Brooklyn's as well. Don't get your hearts mixed up. One Scottish, one British as well. So, <laughs> yeah, no relation of horsemen. Unfortunately, then yeah. it'd be a little more forgivable. It's a real shame. It's not an on tube situation. And, and, and of course, yeah, well, uh, of course, Jack Hart could be Braveheart as well, considering he's Scottish, but he's not opted for that sort of uh, brand identity. <laughs> he's not of the Maverick Vinales school of branding identity with his uh, Top Gun. Anyways, as we see, Brian it gets overtaken once again by Horseman as they go into Cop's Corner. Begin the run down to Maggots and Beckett's there, and I'm surprised. Maybe we're waiting with four laps to go for some mad dives down into Maggots and Beckett's. Who is it going to be this time around? Uh, Brian Hart just in his slipstream there, but backs out of it just at the last moment yet again. I'm guessing the uh, no, it's pretty much too high a risk when you're going into this complex. Reese Irwin says no, though. It's absolutely fine for me. I won that second place. That was very well crafted and almost a bit of a mistake there, I think, from Brian Hart. Yeah, it was a uh, sort of uh, strange. Like they both chose completely opposite lines, and neither of them was quite perfect but in the end it's Reese Irwin then who uh, yeah again another classic dive from the Irishman to go through impressive stuff and now you see they're all bunched up again and it's Seabright coming through Ogden's got shuffled down a little bit and Horseman's just able to stay ahead of that squabble and keep pounding in his lap times and they're uh, fairly relaxed at the front bar those few attacks from Brian Hart but I think it will be definitely very interesting to see what the guys just behind him do who aren't Ogden who don't have that pressure of trying to fight for this title when Horseman obviously has to be absolutely brutal, but they all want their first win as well. Jack Nixon was giving him a lot of trouble earlier. Scott Ogden, and he's going to give him some more trouble now as well. As you can see, he's just behind him is the number two uh, from the number four. He's not going to make any mad moves down into Farm Curve or Abbey. But will we see any more as we head on into the arrowhead? No, Scott Ogden goes very, very wide indeed, defending his line, not just defending his line, attacking Reese Irwin at the inside. Very neat indeed, sends him a little bit wider. But meanwhile, Horseman's taken back the lead from Brian Hart. Reese Irwin, has he got ahead from Ogden? I just missed that. I, I couldn't see the numbers so. go through. It was difficult to see who is the back yes, ahead he did. of him behind. Yeah, I think he did take him back. Nicely done from the Irishman there. Scott Ogden does need to be careful because he <laughs> does have enough points. Uh, I mean, good luck saying that to the guy who's leading the way, really. It almost but, looked like uh, he was waving him through, but I don't think he was. Not really sure. They're, they're certainly... Uh, Someone squeezing up the inside there. Who was that? I that don't was think Ogden. anyone's waving anyone through in that battle well, at the moment, getting pretty feisty. Regardless whether they did guys. or not, he's uh, gone up the inside anyways. He has. Uh, so, uh, again, instructions on track, rarely noticed or obeyed. <laughs> but uh, we can see then Brian Hart 
is back in the lead of this race and uh, Cameron Horseman though looking to change that once again like we said earlier the number 23 seems very eager to lead but now Seabright is the man who's managed to tag onto this duo and just escape that squabble behind so it'll be interesting again to see Ooh. what he will do all pretty well, close through here but Horseman again like we said eager to get that P1 back as soon as he can yeah we do have finally a classic maggots move of Horseman moving up the inside there Reese Irwin is the real loser from that lap last time around he got really Really buffed all around, or although maybe he did wave uh, Ogden through, perhaps not. Well, this is a replay of what happened then. Let's have a look. Watch number 15, looks to the left. No, oh, he says go through. He does. Bizarre. Maybe they got a bit of a gentleman's agreement. Maybe, maybe there was some sort of altercation that we didn't see. Maybe or... he's promised him a Capri Sun at the end of the, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the race. I've got a spare one, mate. You can have that if you let me through. But uh, whatever the case is, Ogden is right on the tail of Cameron Horseman. The two men in charge of this championship. The only two men who could take the cup win uh, this weekend. So it's all changed as we were watching that replay towards the end of the hangar straight. Can I just point out your amazing verbal typo? A uh quite recently, horse move rather than horseman move. That's oh absolutely horse brilliant. Horse move, So we get another horse move for the lead now. Horse move, he's, he's gone, gone up through. the inside of Abby. Excellent stuff, classic move up on the inside of Brian Hart. He's clear, maybe he's even sensed that Scott Ogden is right on his tail, but Scott Ogden himself has got Fenton Seabright for company. Ogden really good on the brakes down there, uh, just right closing in on the- split second, I thought he was gonna go for that then. Yeah. Full on uh, Andrew Irwin style, but not quite. No, not quite there, but uh, Brian Hart cut is uh, definitely under threat into those deep breaking zones there as the time screws just catch up with horseman up into the lead again so no major slipstream in moves for the lead this time around it seems Fenton Seabright's pulled out from Scott Ogden though even if Reece Irwin might let him through Fenton Seabright is going to do everything he can to make sure Scott Ogden is behind him just purely for pride yeah definitely like we said Seabright is here to win races now and there's two more chances to do that in this 2019 British Talent Cup and he's uh, in a pretty good position now having uh, like we said he had escaped that squabble before and uh, now Ogden's managed to leapfrog him once again but yeah there's uh, there's enough time left around this Silverstone track for the likes of Seabright to just move up there and start making their uh, plans for a final attack. Well, a final attack is definitely going to be needed because Scott Ogden has just moved up into second place. He's got Cameron Horseman in his sights. Brian Hart's just behind him though. How long is he going to let him have that position? He looks up the inside of Maggots and Beckis, but he chooses not to. Seabright has uh, been moved down by Jack Nixon as well, the number two. This is the championship battle, the, the British Stalin Cup battle right at the head of the race here. And uh, Cameron Horseman has absolutely no idea who's just behind him right now. He might get a bit of an idea at the end of the Hanger straight here as he gets up look up the inside into Stowe. Look all the way to, over at the right hand side of the circuit to get my left and right sort out there. Oh, it's silly four abreast going down into Stowe and we have Ogden in the lead. Horseman looks at him and says, oh my goodness, where have you come from? That's disastrous for me. You can expect it to fight straight back here into the Vale. That's Harvey Claridge going wide in the background. Horseman moving up the inside, but Ogden is so good on those deep breaking zones there. Yeah, so Horseman is very much aware then that his key rival is in this fight for the win, now leading the race. Just needs to keep it together, stay nice and calm, and see if we can have a nice clean battle then between these two, or maybe someone else can pick their pocket, because there's a few fast guys just behind this duel for the lead. He's just gone on the inside of him, so that was very nice and clean indeed. We're at farm curve now, but what is Ogden gonna do here? Up into the right hand, he's taking a wide line, he's sticking just behind him this time, or is he? Yes, he is. Brian Hart perfectly defends that third place there from the guys behind him. Seabright's moved up into fourth. Look at that wide line from Ogden. He's trying to line him up for down the west. Wellington straight there, maybe for a move in the Brooklands. That was a brave open door though at mm. this point of the race with those guys right behind you. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see if that does pay off. But at the moment then, Horseman back in the driving seat of this race and now very much aware who is with him. But Seabright as well, looking pretty racy. So it would be 11 points if it did end like this. And we have seen Horseman before able to just put in that perfect lap under pressure when it is needed but I'm sure Ogden will uh, not let him get away with it that easily no well as they exit the final corner though he does have a few bike lengths in advantage for Horseman they come across the finish we're coming across the finish line now look at this well <laughs> for the sake of the championship how exciting is this the two men who can win the cup this year first and second coming into the final lap of the penultimate race of the year the man who started on pole position Fenton Seabright your other most frequent race winner in the championship 
Championship this year in third place. He's going to look up the inside of Ogden, but no, Jack Nixon is. They both take him going into Magus of Beckett's, or do they? Ogden defend his line brilliantly as they flip left into the Beckett section, but Horseman has still got a couple of bite legs. Will it last, though, down the hangar straight? I do not know. To be honest, this is going to go to the wire, I think. It looked like Cameron just had enough of an advantage, but now I think the guys, they do have a good chance to catch him by the end of the final lap, and we'll get some more fireworks. But at the moment, Seabright versus Ogden versus Nickton, Nixon, and now Brian Hart as well getting in the mix. These guys are costing Nixon. themselves that little bit of time. Nixon goes up the inside of Ogden, and he shoves him out of the way, so there's going to be no move on at the race leader down into Vale. He still has a couple of bike lengths advantage. Nixon has played an absolute blind here at the moment, but it can all change. We're only halfway or so round the lap, and no overtake moves at this sort of point. There is Ogden. He's got Seabright just behind him. Still plenty more overtaking zones here at this fine Silverstone circuit. We're getting a long look here. Well, the guys at the back there, that's Claridge. Uh, they're definitely out of the podium. I'm still looking at all these guys. Even number 10 back there, Jack Hart. He can still pick up the pieces should there be any incident down in Brooklyn. Absolutely. These guys so close together just behind these couple who've managed to make a little bit more space than them here. And you can see Scott Ogden then what? really lost a few positions. What is going What's on with the points behind leader? Him. What's going on? He's looking like he's cruising. What's going on? Well, that's an absolute disaster for Scott Ogden. He's been absolutely mugged. I did not see what happened there at all. Has he lost power or something? We would imagine. It Look, he's way like... behind. He's completely falling behind. Yeah, he's, he's coasting. Really, he's he's absolutely got coasting. Some sort of problem. Oh, my goodness me. This is absolute drama in the final lap here. What on earth is going on with Scott Ogden's machine? He is limping home, and it looks like Cameron Horseman is going to take the win. Exactly what he needed to do to perfection. Fran, you said that he can put that wonder lap in when he needs to. He is done it he's gonna take the win here but we gotta see where Ogden is gonna come home is it gonna come home at all a uh, horseman takes the win from Nixon Seabright Brian Hart Charlie Farrah Jack Hart Scott Ogden is in seventh place what has that done to the championship what a disaster for Ogden what on earth happened it well, here are the final results and Cameron Horseman takes the win and the 25 points eight tenths in the end ahead of Jack Nixon Fenton Seabright your pole position man was third from Brian Hart who fought right until the end yeah, they really thought he could have got the win there. Perhaps he was fourth from Charlie Farrow, Jack Hart, Scott Ogden, your equal championship leader then just down the road, four seconds away from him. Harvey Claridge just behind him and Reese Owen behind him. He really got buffed about in the last couple of laps, didn't he? Charlie Atkins was 10th from Scott Swan, Jamie Davis, Jamie Lyons, Corey Tinker, Torin Collins, Harry Lee, Oshin Jones and Ross McGuire, who would have started from the back of the grid there after that issue uh, on, uh, on the start line. Edward O'Shea and George Hooper filled out the top 20 riders. Zach Shelton, the only non-finisher in that one. Poor Zach, uh, who sadly crashed out on the second lap there. His uh, run of luck, poor luck, I should say, continues. Let's get a look at the championship results then. If As it... we've already mentioned, if the maths was wrong now and it comes up different, we're going to look awfully stupid. Well, I think the graphics were. We were just reading the graphics. <laughs> Let's see the big reveal. There you go then. It's 201 points apiece. And Cameron Horseman is now the new man in the lead wow. because he does have more wins. So everything goes down tomorrow. Fenton Seabright then has actually decreased his uh, deficit. So he's now in third, but 53 points behind them. And Nixon there in fourth. But that is incredible going into the last race of the season. It's going to be a real occasion tomorrow at 4 p.m. local. <laughs> Good plug for the time plug. then, yes. <laughs> After what is going to be a action-packed day of motorcycle racing, of course, with, I mean, with uh, with Rossi on the front row, the weather set, uh, and more Rossi and Marquez on the front row with that, uh, Fabio Quattararo there, and, well, so many guys that you can't even pick out of a hat for the Jeff win Miller tomorrow. The front row. Here the guys then make their way onto the podium. Horseman on the top step, not that he wasn't tall enough before. <laughs> Absolutely, Carmelo as Belletta, Dorna CEO, hands out the third place trophy to Fenton Seabright. He'll be pretty chuffed with that one. Jack Nixon will be very happy with that second place, of course. But the winner's trophy absolutely goes to Cameron Horseman.